Hey guys, what's up, Daniel here. Today we're taking a look at some of my favorite iPad OS features. Now I've never gotten so many emails and stuff about people asking for, uh, you know, to see a couple of more features on the iPad mini since that's what we got here with the iPad OS. So I thought, you know, I'd go over some of my favorite features and then, uh, you know, answer some questions we got in the previous video as well. So straight off the bat, one of the most requested things was checking to see if uh, flash drives and external media will work with the new uh, files management app and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get into that here. Of course, here we have an SD card with Apple's uh, lightning to SD adapter. You could also, of course, use a lightning to USB for um, other drives and stuff that you might have. Everything will work the same way, but here's just to show you. Here we have our locations on the left-hand side. Once I go in here and I plug in the SD card, it takes a couple seconds here for it to appear. And you can see here it says Canon DC. We go into this folder, this folder, and you can see that the folder management and everything is just like it would be on a normal computer. So here we have some pictures that I've taken. You can preview the video. So here, for example, is a 4K video here. And it does stutter a bit. I don't know how it would be on the iPad Pro, but here, you know, I can at least uh, check if this is the right video file that I want and stuff like that. But uh, you know, it's able to open it up, which is nice. And here we have some pictures that I have as well. And everything's pretty fast considering these are very large picture files. Um, and you can see that there. I can scroll through and view my files as I normally would. I can click done, whoops, I clicked the wrong button. I can click done right here. And uh, you can just control this like normal files, which is just kind of really awesome. It really breathes new life to something special like an iPad mini that um, is just not quite as pro as the iPad Pro, but now it actually feels like a mini iPad Pro. So let's go ahead and take this picture here. We can click move. I can actually choose any other location that I want. So if I was moving files from iCloud to the SD card, I could do that. Let's go ahead into iCloud Drive and you here you can see I could click on desktop documents and anywhere here and then it would end up on my computer in the correct files. So this is really awesome if you have a setup like me where I have a MacBook Pro docked and I don't want to connect this to the MacBook Pro, I could connect it to here and then move things to my desktop or to another folder very easily, which is very nice. So now let's go ahead and exit out of that. The only thing that I noticed that I couldn't do was uh, whenever I click select and I select a picture and then, or not there, but when I go into the picture, actually, I select it and then I click share and then I click save image. I have no idea where it's actually taking this image. I was looking for it on my iPad and it is not here. And then I was looking for it in my recent um, pictures as well. And it was not there as well. So let me see here. They changed the pictures up quite a bit as well. So I went into here and it was also not there. So I'm not sure where the picture is going when you do that. You can go into import right here and import the pictures normally. Uh, however, that's not really what I want to do. But just to go ahead and show another feature here, now that we know that works, let's go ahead and import uh, this picture right here and import selected. And uh, let's go ahead and delete it for, oh, it crashed. Uh oh, let's see if the picture is still here. Yep, it did import the picture. So here we have that picture. Now what we can do is use the new uh, feature set built into here, which you can see we have a bunch of new options, which um, basically you don't need another app like Visco or VSEO or Lightroom or anything to do basic edits on your photos. So here we can actually just go ahead and uh, change the brilliance a little bit to however you want, play around with it, the highlights. Uh, let's go with the shadows as well contrast and you can see things happen really fast and this is like a 24 megapixel image from a full frame camera so uh you know it's doing a really really good job the only thing i think is missing here is a little grain filter but that is fine i think for general edits this is going to be really great to have and of course this isn't a feature just to the ipad this is a kind of general ios 13 feature but i really do love it since now i don't have to open up an extra app and then have problems with dual images saved because I edited one and saved it again, et cetera, et cetera. This is just very straightforward and simple with iOS. And you can see, there we go. It saved the picture and uh, no issues with zooming in and everything. And you got your edits done, which is great. And now that we're here, let's do one more feature that I really like. So with the Apple Pencil now, you can actually drag from this bottom left-hand corner. What's cool is like, you can see the beautiful animation they got going there. I can change it back and then, you know, change my mind on it, but let's go ahead and keep going takes a screenshot of whatever you're on. So if you're in Safari, anything like that, you wanna send someone something that's annotated, then you can do that 
What's here is that we have this new uh, design for all the pencils and everything's being redesigned for this. Now it's like a really nice actual drawing app whenever you use this instead of what we used to have before, which was a little bit um, not great, but this is definitely much more capable of doing uh, some drawing. So even if you're in notes, you're gonna get this exact same thing. So here, let's go ahead and draw a little bit on the picture. So let's go, uh, that's Naruto. And uh, Midoriya. And then we got Kakashi. Okay, so then we've annotated the picture and what's nice here, they actually added a pixel eraser. And before I believe it was just an object eraser. So you can switch between the two. So that's his object eraser. It'll erase the object very easily. And then you click again and then you have a pixel eraser to just erase little by little. So it's really nice. There's a lot of apps you don't need to open anymore because it's all built into iOS. So now of course I can just finish cropping this image here with my finger, I'll do that. Then I can just click share and uh, I could just send it to wherever I want and I could save the files. And uh, here, we'll choose Canon DC, DCIM, 100 Canon, and then click Save. So now it's saving the item back to the SD card. And now, you know, I've imported the picture, deleted it from the SD card, brought it back with edits, and uh, not something you usually do, but you can do it now. And of course, this would apply to pretty much any other file. It is taking its time a little bit, but uh, that is fine. And you can see that the functionality works really great. So. One of the reasons I ended up selling my iPad Pro 11 inch is that when I tried this iPad mini, I flippin' loved it. I think, you know, I wish it was full screen and that it was a little bit more updated in design. However, it's powerful enough for the things that I do. I love holding it with just one hand to sketch and do some designs. I love the smart cover design still way more than Apple's smart folio. I just love being able to flip this back and forth and not have something covering the back at all times. I don't like that. I like that aluminum feel from time to time and I like it being easier to take off. So that's why I ended up getting an iPad mini. And now it's really cool because it feels like a little iPad Pro and not just like a mini iPad Air. But I guess now all of the other iPads will get the same functionality. So they all kind of feel like pros at this point. Now, oddly enough, it is still saving. So clearly it's not easy for it for some reason to um, process this very quickly. So this is where, you know, an actual iPad Pro would come into place and things would be quite a lot faster than this iPad mini. So for time's sake, let's just go ahead and cancel that. I don't really need it on my SD card, but you know, that functionality is there if you need it, especially if you're not going to transfer such a big high res file. And I think everything is just frozen right now. So let's go ahead and not quit because everything is actually frozen. Okay. I don't know what happened, but I think I saved it or something. I'll just exit it. Let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, now we're back and let's go over another one of my favorite features here. So if we double tap, you can see that I have a saved workspace right here. This has iTunes or Apple Music and then Safari web browser right here. Like always, you have multitasking. You can resize the pages and stuff like that if you want. However, what you can do now is that I could put another Safari here or I could put two Apple Music uh, windows here. So let's see. Actually, I haven't tried it with two Apple Music, so that might actually not work. I just did a really bad example. Let's see. Yeah, that doesn't work. But uh, I could put two mail apps, two messages apps. I have things in those apps, so I can't uh, use that for that right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and put a files app. And then we'll put another files app here. Oh. And there, there we go. So now we can actually have two split views of the same app, you know, depending on what it is. So if you have mail, you can open up mail in two and then copy and paste from one to another, which is nice. Remove things from one place to another with just dragging and dropping. That I thought was really awesome. What's also awesome is that I can still have another window floating here that I can be using, right? So if I'm listening to some music, I wanna control that. I can do that. And then what's really cool is that they've basically added a little mini iPhone here because I can drag up and I can see all of the other little side view windows that I'm using. So I can switch between them just like that, or I can actually drag between them like that as well. And uh, that's really cool. And look how smooth everything is. It is very smooth. So if I go here to Reddit and I click on this video, I can play that video. You can see there is no lag and I can still be doing things here without a hitch. And uh, I think that functionality is really awesome. So another thing that Apple mentioned in the keynote is that you would now basically get desktop class browsing on iPad or at least the iPad Pro. 
And uh, yeah, that is seems to be something that is specific to the iPad Pro. Again, this is only beta one, so maybe it comes to the iPad mini in the future. It would be nice to get a full desktop version of something like YouTube on here without an issue, but you can see it does load the mobile site. Let's go ahead and unplug this. One of the things that I like about the files app is you, it doesn't tell you to like eject it or anything, it just unplugs. So even if I turn it this way, you can see it is the mobile version. We're not getting the desktop version automatically like um, they said and like you would probably get on the iPad Pro. So that kind of sucks. So that's one of the features that, or at least the only one that I can think of that didn't make it into the iPad mini. Everything else is here. And uh, of course, you know, again, let's go into the accessibility here. Let's go ahead and turn on touch and then on. And let's go ahead and connect this mouse again so we can show you something else that I just didn't show in the last one. So I click two and it should automatically connect unless I screwed something up yesterday and it's not automatically connecting. So let's go ahead here and go to pointing devices, Bluetooth devices, Apple Pencil. Let me go ahead and hit pair here. All right, so for some reason, could not get the mouse to connect right now. But with that said, I did wanna go into the settings just to show you guys that you can only make the cursor larger. So you can see there, I can click that and it'll make that cursor that I showed you in the last video just a little bit larger. Then we got the colors here, which is gray, white, blue, red, green, yellow, orange. And I had gone with gray because that was the least noticeable one when you're using it. But of course you can change it depending on what you want. But those are all the settings that you get with the mouse. And uh, again, you know, we had the mouse keys. Uh, here you can do, you know, some extra other stuff that didn't really need to do for that video. And uh, yeah, zoom pan, all these features I didn't go into because these are just extra features that don't really change much of anything. Uh, one of the things that people were talking about was text editing and unfortunately, that's not really gonna make things better because uh, it just doesn't detect it or an Apple doesn't want you to use it as a mouse, at least as of this beta one. So uh, if we go here, you can see that if I, with my finger, I just touch and drag, whoops, touch and drag, nope, touch and drag, there we go. You can see that it just, just works automatically with text selecting and in iOS 13, it is much better now and it's much easier to select with your finger. However, this feature doesn't carry over to when you put the mouse on. Whenever you click and drag, it just doesn't work. And I feel like they're purposefully holding that back so that you can't do that because technically that mouse or pointer system is working like a finger, right? So if I click on the screen and then drag, it should work, but it doesn't because what that, that mouse is doing is that it's registering the click as just one click. So as if I went like that, right? Every time I click the mouse pointer, it just does that. If I hold down the mouse pointer clicked, it doesn't register that, at least right now, as me holding my finger and then dragging and doing that motion that I'm showing you right now, right? So it's not gonna work for Microsoft Word and things like that where you wanna select text quickly because you could do it faster with a finger. You can still do it on the, on the mouse. If you double click or double tap on that, you'll still get this exact same cursor and then you have to drag that cursor like this which is not ideal, but it will work with the mouse. But obviously Apple is kind of holding that back right now, possibly on purpose for it to not be like a full mouse supported iPad. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, if that worked perfectly like a mouse, I would actually consider switching my MacBook Pro to an iPad, mainly because it is very capable of doing all the things that I need to do on it without any issues. You got apps like LumaFusion where you can edit videos, which is really cool. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to mention here, or at least the last one, is that copy and paste and undo is now easier. So uh, I can select text and then take three, fi three fingers and then up, it copies. Then I can go to another line and then just plop it down with three fingers again. And you can see that it just pasted it there. So if I go again, plop, 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 it just pastes. And then I can just undo with three fingers to the left. And it's just starts to undo everything I did or forward and redo. And those gestures are gonna be system-wide even on apps that don't support those gestures. They'll work if they have undo and redo buttons. So that's what Apple said. Haven't really tested it in every app, but it does seem to work really well. And I do love that they put that system-wide because it works with drawing and all that. And that is really cool. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. It's just a quick overview of iPad OS. Some of the features that I've kind of used a lot since I downloaded it the other day. So far, it's been pretty stable. There are quite a few apps that crash. I've had some problems with mail um, on iOS or on my phone. There's problems with, with a lot of video capture apps. So uh, my brother, I put it on his, he's had problems with TikTok and Snapchat. So worth noting that you'll lose a lot of functionality in quite a few apps if you do install this. And uh, 
I don't really recommend it. Just wait till the public beta, which is in about a month and it'll be definitely more stable then. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the comments down below or personally, I got some emails from you guys, which was really nice uh, talking about, you know, if I could show some more things. And of course, I'm always here and to respond to your questions if you have specific ones and you want me to test it out on this tablet. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like it, make sure to leave a like because that helps the video a ton. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I always try to read them all and get back to you guys as well if you have any specific questions. Or you can also ask me on Twitter at armardnl or on Instagram and I will get back to you there as well. Now if there's background noise, that is just rain in the background. So I do apologize for that if it was noticeable in the video. If it wasn't, then awesome. But uh, as always, I will catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.